E3, something feels very wrong about this show, especially uh, this year. Before we get to the main story today, let's talk about this little bit of ridiculousness. This was information relayed by news outlet Eurogamer. Turns out that uh, E3 can't even keep its own website from leaking or going live early. Apparently it was discovered by form users in Reset Era that if you go to a certain website, you'll actually be able to bring up the full E3 website for 2020, which looks something like this. And this is a website that isn't supposed to go live until tomorrow. From what I understand, nothing confidential was leaked per se, but the fact that they can't even lock this down, especially after what happened last year with them having leaked over 2,000 attendees' personal information, having doxxed a bunch of journalists and media outlets and content creators. This just doesn't inspire confidence that things will be different this year, that the ESA will really be on the lookout to ensure that our data is safe when they can't even keep their own website from going up early. And then on the same day, E3 just suffered another major blow. Jeff Keighley is a name synonymous with E3. He's attended pretty much every single one of those events over the past 25 years. Some would say that more recently, he's kind of become the face of E3. When you think who hosts E3, a lot of people, I think, will think of Jeff Keighley. And he's done things like the E3 Coliseum event and the YouTube Gaming E3 Live stuff. He's hosted that as well. He's just been all over E3. And so when you hear that... Jeff Keighley is among those who will be skipping E3 2020. Yeah, that raises red flags. This was information Jeff Keighley conveyed via Twitter, an announcement that he made with the following statement. A statement from Jeff Keighley on E3. For the past 25 years, I have attended every electronic entertainment expo. Covering, hosting, and sharing E3 has always been a highlight of my year, not to mention a defining part of my career. I've debated what to say about E3 2020. While I want to support the developers who will showcase their work, I also need to be open and honest with you, the fans, about precisely what to expect from me. I have made the difficult decision to decline to produce E3 Coliseum. For the first time in 25 years, I will not be participating in E3. I look forward to supporting the industry in other ways and at other events in the future. E3 is already an event that's being viewed as less and less relevant with every passing year. Game companies, the big three in particular, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, are resorting to hosting their own events, essentially, whether it be via a press conference or through a Nintendo Direct-style format. Microsoft is currently the only one of the big three that's still participating in E3, but even then, they don't actually have a show floor at the LA Convention Center. Microsoft's venue is actually next door in their own location, so Microsoft is not really directly within E3, and EA even, their EA Play event, while it's hosted close to E3 in order to sort of connect those two, the EA Play thing is its own isolated sort of venue that occurs outside of the E3 show floor. And this pattern has been consistent. More companies just kind of separating themselves from E3 as an event. But now to hear that something caused Jeff Keighley to turn down hosting E3 Coliseum, something caused them to just not participate in E3, that is just, uh, wow, uh, what is going on? Something's got to be really off if even Jeff Keighley, who loves attending E3 and hosting and participating in it, decided to jump ship. I can only surmise that Jeff must be pretty unhappy with what the ESA is planning with E3 2020 and what they have said about how they plan to proceed with the future of the expo. Hard to say for sure, Jeff Keighley hasn't been 100% uh, specific with why exactly he's leaving. He did try to respond to as many questions as possible in this thread. He posted, if you have questions, I am happy to answer here on social media. So scrolling down, you'll see people asking a number of questions like, what fueled your decision to not participate? Jeff Keighley said a ton of factors. I just don't really feel comfortable participating given what I know about the show as of today. Yikes. 
Scrolling further down, with Sony, yourself, and potentially others opting out of E3, is it even viable anymore? Why doesn't it carry the same industry weight it once did? And what changes should be made to keep it relevant? Jeff Keighley responded with, I think E3 needs to become more digital and global. It's a brand that means a lot to people, but it shouldn't just be a show floor. One user then brought up the infamous doxing incident from last year, asking if Jeff Keighley not participating in E3 2020 has anything to do with that. Jeff responded, tons of factors weighed into my decision. So he's not being particularly specific here, which is a bit frustrating, but I think it maybe has to do with, you know, Jeff not being able to disclose E3 plans, maybe under some kind of NDA, given that when you do meet up with, uh, you know, the folks at ESA and try to plan things out for E3, there's probably some kind of agreement in regards to, you know, don't disclose certain bits of information. Maybe that's why he can only say so much. Now, it would seem as though Jeff Keighley, while not participating directly with E3, might try to be involved in covering the event in some way. When this user asked, does this mean there won't be a YouTube gaming stream from E3 this year, or will they just find a new host? Jeff Keighley said, we're still figuring out plans with YouTube for this year. And then further information can be found in this Games Industry article. When the outlet reached out to Keighley, he actually responded with a bit more information. Here's what he had to say on this whole situation and his decision to skip E3 2020. Given what has been publicly communicated about plans for E3 2020, I just don't feel comfortable participating in the show at this time. I saw the E3 website leak this AM and said, you know what, I really need to let people know what to expect from me so no one is disappointed. This certainly wasn't an easy decision to make, but I think it's the right one for me, and I wanted fans to know before tickets go on sale. And then on the topic of E3 needing to be more digital, and global, something he kind of touched upon in one of his Twitter responses. Jeff Keighley further elaborated with, we are at an interesting inflection point between physical and digital events, and certainly E3 is in the middle of a transition, evolving from what was traditionally an industry trade show. As someone who attended E3 for more than two and a half decades, there are, of course, a lot of emotions, but when you look at it objectively, E3 is really just an idea about uniting the industry and fans to celebrate the medium on a global scale. The future of E3 will be determined based on how effective the brand is at delivering against that goal. I absolutely think there is a way forward for the brand of E3. This is just my take, but I think E3 needs to be more digital, global, and inclusive in its approach to connecting gamers and celebrating the industry. It's not really about who buys a booth on the show floor. Anyone who participated in the game festival on Steam around the Game Awards probably has a pretty good sense of my vision for how we bring the world together around games. For those who don't know what he's talking about, Jeff Keighley did this thing where he hosted a bunch of game demos on Steam in conjunction with Game Awards announcements. And I thought actually that was a really cool idea that if expanded upon could be cool and allow more people to test out games during events like E3 rather than just allowing those who are there physically to partake. And so maybe Jeff Keighley wanted to implement something similar for E3. And then to close things off, Keighley said, I'm always open to conversations with game publishers and partners about ways to evolve how we come together for industry events. No matter what, it's really important that we get everyone to participate in these events. That's something I'll look forward to doing at places like Gamescom and the Game Awards. Even with these statements, it's still just kind of hard to say exactly what drove Jeff Keighley to say sayonara and just jump ship. I'm wondering if this has anything to do with the overhaul that the ESA is allegedly proposing for E3 2020 as leaked by news outlet Game Daily. This event is apparently now going to focus on celebrities and influencers and these stations where they play games and people watch and there's talk of things like the cutainment which is basically you know people who are lining up you know, it's like ads thrown at them while they're lining up. And I'm not sure how much of this will actually come to fruition, but uh, I'm not liking the ideas proposed here. Uh, This focus on celebrities, consumers, and influencers, fan media and influencer festival is what was apparently proposed. Earlier this year, we did hear from the ESA that they promised to shake things up for E3, saying you'll be happy to know that we're not producing E3 2020 in a vacuum. For E3 2020, we're collaborating with industry insiders and new creative partners, including the tastemakers at IAM8Bit.com, to reinvigorate the show and frankly to shake things up. We are well down the path on the development and production of a large, super fun floor experience that celebrates gaming culture in exciting new ways. 
So they're definitely gonna try something different, and whatever that different thing is doesn't seem to appeal to the likes of Jeff Keighley, someone who again has been very loyal to E3, who has a very personal connection to the event. If someone like him says goodbye, nope, I mean, I... <sighs> I don't know what to expect from the event. And it isn't just Jeff Keighley who said something along the lines of, based on what we know about E3 today, we don't feel like this is worth participating in. Sony said something similar when talking about how PlayStation will not be present at E3 2020, how they'll also be skipping the event. They said, but we do not feel the vision of E3 2020 is the right venue for what we are focused on this year. Sony also doesn't seem to be a fan of whatever... E3 2020's uh, shaking things up proposal is. Just all around, this paints a grim picture of the event and the E3 brand and its ability to remain relevant for years to come. And you scroll down through the comments here, and uh, yeah, people are kind of having this pessimistic attitude about the event now. Big guys like Jack Jacksepticeye said, you know, man, E3 is going to blow this year. Now, do I think that Jeff Keighley being part of E3 is the key to making E3 good? No, of course not. It's a number of things that makes a good E3. But it's just the, the sentiment surrounding E3 right now, the reasoning behind why people are skipping and the rumblings we're hearing about uh, what the ESA is planning and how people feel about that. That's what concerns me. More and more, E3 feels like it's being viewed on a negative light, especially with that doxing incident. I mean, that was pretty awful what happened there. And the ESA hasn't really gone out of their way to try to win that trust back. They've kind of brushed that over and issued sort of a boilerplate apology and said, whoops, oh well, we'll try better next time. And that's the extent to which uh, they try to mitigate that situation. I guess only time will tell how E3 2020 pans out. I guess in time we'll learn all the details surrounding the event and maybe deduce why people like Jeff and companies like PlayStation decided, nope, this vision is not for us. Uh, but until then, you know, uh, this is one man's take on the situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Jeff Keighley skipping E3 2020, why you think this might happen and what you think this means for the event's future. Drop a comment below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.